you have done so much to improve the quality of life of villagers as they are at the present time. My dream is something very different. Why should a village be poorer than a city? Why should not villages be as prosperous as cities are? What is it that we should do so that the villages are so good that a person like me, a retired professor, doesn't stay in Delhi but will stay in the village? It happens in the United States. Um, people, they stay in the village and come to the city. In India, even if you have a job in the village, you stay in the city and come into the village. Can you do something to change this? Now, in our country, there is a new concept called Aam Army. <laughs> and uh, government has got several schemes to help these people. But, in my opinion, it will not function as a charity from the government or from any areas, but it should become a commercial operation. Somebody should make some profit out of it, and then, and only then, will it prosper. Because the city is <coughs> you come, you can make money out of it. And I think we should do the same thing for the people who go to the village, and they become richer there, and therefore they go and stay there. So the idea that I am thinking of is that people like you, people like me, will leave the cities and live in villages. Let us see what is it that we should do for this. <coughs> now, what is Aam Aadmi? I would say the bottom half of the population is Aam Aadmi. This is a simple definition. And I am cho choosing this because there is a principle called the 80 20 principle, according to which the upper half is 80% of the assets. Income at least, not assets in India, and 20% we go to the bottom half of the population. This is the normal rule. But in our country, we do not have normal rules. <coughs> lower half, they do not get 20% of the assets. They do not 20% of the land. They do not get 20% of water, electricity, sanitation, housing, anything like that. That's why we are having slums. Bombay, I think about 60% of the population, they live in slums. Delhi is about 45%. I don't know about the other city, but they are all having increasing number of stocks. <coughs> and there is a plan to increase the population of Delhi, double the population of Delhi. And I can assure you most of it will go into slums, not into <coughs> what we call as decent, livable accommodation. Now, what is it that we can do? And I suggest we change from the growth into the development. <coughs> now, inclusive growth means that we increase the income marginally. The government has got what are called Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. And they give 100 rupees, hopefully, the former gets it, the worker gets it, they are getting it. But it does give some amount of income to the poor person. But can he buy a car? Can he have a good house? Can he have a refrigerator? I don't think it's possible with 100 rupees. In fact, it is possible with 100 rupees. Now, what is that we can do so that the villager can have the same quality of life that an ordinary person, I'm not talking upper middle class person like us, but I'm talking of the say, lower middle class person so the city can have. This is what I am talking of. So what is it that we should give in, in that case? Now you know the poor person does not have assets. He does not have capital. So whatever asset he has to have must be given to him. It should be something that is in a different way altogether. What are these things? Dwelling with the first one. Water, sanitation, education, health care. All these things you should have access. Access to health care access to education, access to markets, access to places of work. And these are the things that the poor person should have. And I think a community like ours should be able to offer all these things and do it as a commercial business. This is what I would like to do. Now, these 
specialty that I'm talking of, they are all wealth parameters. They are not income parameters. Because they are wealth, once in a year it very it doesn't vanish. It will be there for 50 years, 60 years, there for the life of the person. Similarly, water, sanitation, education is there for life, health care is for life. We have a hospital, it's not going to die. So these are permanent and therefore they are sustainable. Whereas income growth, you have got the Mahatma Gandhi scheme. Let government jump and say, no, we don't want this. Then the person again becomes poor. So I don't want that to happen. Want something which will be permanent for the person's life. And these are the things that I told you, wearing water, sanitation, education, health care, and access. These are the things that the person should have. Next one, please. Now, it has got habitat design and it has got social services. These are the two things that you have in inclusive development. And these services, they are of two types. One I call a tele ineffective. It's something that must be there close to your house. These are, for example, water, sanitation, nursery school, transport. This should be within walking distance. This is, these are the things that are tele ineffective. They are not accessible, they are not useful if they are far away. But there are other things which don't have to be next door to you. For example, school, hospitals, market, entertainment, recreation and so on. You are prepared to walk, you are prepared to travel 15 minutes or even half an hour to go to school or a hospital or to your market or to your <coughs> work. Therefore, you have these two kinds of services. Problem is this, most villages are too small to provide a good school. When I, what I really mean by a good school, it's not the you know, single teacher school you have, make it into two teachers. You have a blackboard, it's supposed to be an improved school. No, I don't believe in that. Why should not the school in a village be as good as it is in the city of Delhi? Have 30 teachers in the school and have nice playgrounds. Have toilets, which we do not have in our schools. Now these things cannot be had in this village because village is not, does not have a population to support so many teachers. It cannot have, I'm not talking about a cancer hospital, I'm talking about secondary care, like child care, women care, these things, gynecology and things like that, about half a dozen doctors, maybe ten doctors. Again, a village cannot support these things. So we have a good market. We have malls, we have plenty of malls here in Dugong. Why can't we have it in the villages um, surrounding this place? Now, these are the kinds of things which a village should have access to. 